<laughs> so when you're taking the ACD, how do you know when to use the significant figure rules? Uh, when, when there's a, uh, there. Starts with a U. When there's a unit. Very good, Alex. So if you see a unit on the ACT, when you see mass problems like this, you must round it according to these rules. Okay. Yeah, you're going to round it to 16 because the one will round down. So the answer will be 16. Now the meters cross out, so it's just 16. Now the uh, meters cross out, so it's just 16. It's like if you divided 16 feet by 2 feet, you have 8 units or 8. So go in there eight times. Very good, Kevin. Excellent. Fifteen. Oh, <laughs> Don't forget to write the unit. Excellent. Substances define George. <laughs> substances define with uniform and unchanging composition and they can be classified or grouped based on their density and movement. Now their movement uh, is going to determine how stable they are or unstable. So you get into isotopes, you get into uh, a lot of variables uh, as far as different types of energies. Okay, make sure you've got your Google Classroom code. Write that down. I'm videoing it for third period. And you'll notice on Google Classroom, we have the first study guide for the test. Yeah, I'll put it back up in just a second. I'm going to show you the test. Right, so here you're going to click on the study guide. Right, if you click on that, this pops up. That's the first test. And as you scroll all the way down, you'll see the answers at the bottom. So if you read through this, you can practice. 15 of the questions will come exactly from the study guide. I don't think any other teacher does that. I'm nice. Not necessarily that I'm nice, I just want you to kind of get an idea of what to expect. This isn't like math, the first time you've had math, or the first time you've had English, it's the first time most of you all had this chemistry, so I kind of want to give you a little bit of um, comfort going in for the first test, of having seen some of the questions before. Give you a little confidence, no, sorry, comfort, more of confidence. So let's go back and take a look at the number. Emma, taking the ACT, how do you know when to use this, use these rules? Noah, when you're taking the ACT, how do you know when to use these rules? Because if you get close to the answer, it's right. No, we talked about earlier in the year. It's going to say to convert, and then that's going to give you a hint. No. If you see one thing, if you see units up here on the board, you'll see that you have a number and you have a unit. In math class, they don't teach you units. It's all just numbers. That's what I was trying to say. Right. Or a variable like x. They never define the actual number. When you see a number with a unit, that tells you they actually measured something with a tool. They got out a meter stick and measured this. So that means you have to follow the rules associated with rounding because the tool is telling you how precise it is and you can't have your answer being more precise than the tool you used to measure. Is that line? So you have to follow these rules when you see the unit uh, length, mass, you know, grams. When you see a measurement taken, you've got to follow these rules. Is that the right answer? No, the first one is not correct. Oh, Anybody the right answer? Sick. It looks like it's going to be uh, 531 meters. You have to round to the 531 because 
this one doesn't have any past the decimal. It's the weaker measurement compared to the 3 7. And this one here, you're going to round this off to 470 because of the 2 past the decimal and the none past the decimal here. This is the weaker measurement, 31 is, so it's 470. And then this one right here, this is, ends up being close um, to like 16,000. That's meter square. Okay. But you rounded it from 15,000 to 16. You're close, but you rounded it too extremely. So you know that this is a 5 that's odd, so he should have rounded it to 16,000. Right? Meter squared. Or 1.6 times 10 to the 4th meters squared. Everybody see that? This is what, these are the two options here you could have gotten. And letter D. Okay, today we've got some bell work reviewing chapter one and two. We're going to convert some units, dimensional analysis, and we got some significant figures and then the math rules associated with significant figures. Earth can be classified as one in the, of these physical forms, which are called states of matter. Each of the three common states of matter can be distinguished by the way it fills the container. Scientists also recognize order states of matter. One of them is called plasma. It can occur in the form of lightning bolts and in stars. Okay, very good. Now we want to flip over to page 70 and read substances as well. I want to read that. Oh, go ahead, Gabe. Uh, as you know, matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. Everything around us is, is matter, including things that we cannot see, such as air and microbes. For example, table salt is a simple type of matter that you are probably familiar with. Table salt is a unique and unchanging chemical composition. Its chemical name is sodium chloride. It is always 100% sodium chloride, and its composition does not change from one sample to another. Salt harvested from the sea or extracted from a mine, as shown in Figure 3.1, always has the same composition and properties. Okay, so on the board over here, we have a note we want you to put in your notebook. That would be a substance is matter with uniform and unchanging composition. Now, when we say unchanging composition, we're talking about physical and chemical change, not nuclear. We all know that North Korea set off a hydrogen bomb over the weekend. Yep. Hear about that? Nope. Now, that would be nuclear, and that's where you can, can change the composition, but we'll talk about that here in about a month or so. Okay, so we have a little bell work reviewing dimensional analysis, converting units, and sig figs, and then math rules with sig figs. So how do you know, raise your hand, when you're going to use significant figures? If you have an ACT question. If you see a unit up there. So on number three, bell work, 3B, you see how it says 501.37 meters minus 31 meters. Any question on the ACT that has a unit next to it, a meter, a gram, kilogram, you must follow the significant figure rules when you're doing addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. So I just want to note that. That's kind of like the little bell that rings in your head. If it's just basic numbers, then you don't need to follow these rules. But if there are units there, you must follow the significant figure rules. Also, I posted your study guide on Google Classroom, and 15 of the 50 questions for the first test will be exactly from that study guide. Just give you a 
15 of the 50 will come from the study guide. Okay, Rain, you got the first one correct. Now, if you look up here, please write this down, Alex. Write this down. She got the first one correct because there's no decimal here. This number was rounded. So it could be anywhere from 50 to 150. The second one, there's a decimal here. So this number was counted exactly to 100. So there are three true numbers there the one, the zero, and the zero. So that's wrong. It should actually be three. Now, the last number C. Correction, letter C. Letter C. You've got $500 in your bank account. So the two decimals that follow are true. So you've got a total of five. Five true numbers. That, that tells you that your pennies were counted. And then the last one here, these are true. These are placeholders. And so you have four there. So check your work to make sure you got the same thing that... Okay, Rain, you got the first one correct. Now, if you look up here, please write this down, Alex. Write this down. She got the first one correct because there's no decimal here. This number was rounded. So it could be anywhere from 50 to 150. The second one, there's a decimal here. So this number was counted exactly to 100. So there are three true numbers there the one, the zero, and the zero. So that's wrong. It should actually be three. Now, the last number C, correction, letter C. Letter C, you've got $500 in your bank account. So the two decimals that follow are true. So you've got a total of five. Five true numbers. That, that tells you that your pennies were counted. And then the last one here, these are true. These are placeholders. And so you have four there. So check your work to make sure you got the same thing that. Always compose a tabulator and water and tap water or the other layers are not pure substances because samples taken from different locations. <laughs>